Hello and welcome to the shop of Grey Nichols and here we have met with Alex and he will explain how a cricket bat is being made from the English willow. So Alex, over to you. Oh yeah. So at Grey Nichols what will happen is we'll bring out the trees from our plantations into our yard. Okay. We'll cut them down into 29 inch lengths, so yeah. they'll be round lengths. Yeah. We then split them. So this is what you get from that. So that's a sink. That will make one cricket bat out of there. Okay. And this is where we can start to see the quality of the timber, the way the grain's running, whether it's nice and straight or whether it's bendy or whether you've got knots and faults in it. Mm. From this we'll cut one cleft. So one of these surfaces will become your striking surface. The best mm. one will be your striking surface. Two edges in a back and that's where you get, so that's your, that's your cleft. So that's what we're going to make the bat from. You can see where the grain's running, lovely and straight and clean. There's no faults in there. It's nice and light and that's going to end up making a really nice piece, of nice bat. Mm. Once, so that's been dried, mm -hmm. it's been uh, graded and, con and quality controlled. Then it goes into our factories. We've got them around the world and that's where we'll start the making process. How many days it will take to get, get so, it? So, um, to get to this point here, hmm. including drying time, is about three months. Three months? Yeah, it's about three months to dry them out, get them to the right moisture content. And from where in England this kind of willows are being We found? grow them everywhere. So we've got plantations in Somerset, hmm. all the way right up to North Yorkshire. Okay. Trees growing around the world. We'll do, uh, we'll fell about 1,500 trees every year. Okay. Uh, but we'll try and aim to replant three or 4,000 of them. So that and Grey Nichols has his own, I mean, uh, garden. It's all, it's all our willow. Yeah, we grow it all ourselves. Uh, we do all the the harvesting and we bring it all into our own yards. We, we're working right from the very roots of, uh, of the tree all the way through to the finished product. Okay, so we are here now. We're here now. Yeah. So the bat makers, all they'll do is they'll look at this cleft that they've been given. Yes. They'll decide which end's going to be the striking point, so the best end, and which mm. end's going to have the handle fitted. Mm. So you'll cut your handle splice, mm. you'll give yourself a couple of cuts on the back to help with the, the shape, the rough shape of mm. it. Mm. We'll then fit the handles into this splice here. Okay. So a handle, our handles are made from 12 pieces of laminated cane. So 12 each, pieces? 12 pieces. So each layer here, you can see, is set into three pieces. That's three pieces set together mm. um, with some rough three rubber springs mm. uh, and then there'll be a, normally a willow insert in there as well. Okay. They'll be glued together, left overnight in a press oh. and then we'll turn them on a lathe so that we get them down into this oval, semi-oval shape that we have here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is then, the splice is then cut mm. um, to fit into here. Oh. So what you ideally want when that fits in, mm. when it's been all, all fitted flush, yeah. this will fit to about two or three millimeters from the bottom of the blade. Okay. Tap it in with a hammer. You should get a nice tight fit all the way around. Tight mm. enough mm. that you can go and hit a cricket ball and it won't move. Okay. 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 We'll then drive the handle out. So we'll drive it, get, hold the handle and drive mm. the blade off. Mm. Hot glue back in it goes nice mm. and flush to the bottom mm. and leave that overnight to dry overnight overnight okay. and then we're ready to start working on it the next day so what material do you use to fill this gap they won't be that'll be flush all when it, once it's been glued that'll be flush all the way to the bottom okay so you, you'll end up with like something this that, like this so nice and flush all the way through there nice and tight to the bottom mm -hmm. front and back no gaps there and that's what we want so that is then ready for the first stage of the bat making process which is the one thing I can't bring here which is the press oh, okay and the pressing is one of the most important parts of what goes on mm. how this timber compresses and this mm. is very 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 soft mm. so soft that you won't hit the ball off the strip let alone the square oh. how we how well the bat takes the compression that's what we'll that's the most important part so how well the bat compresses is oh. how will indicate how well the bat will play when it's in these guys hands okay so Nowadays we see the entire bat is a sweet spot. In fact, the edges ball hit the edges and goes yeah. out of the ground. Yeah. So how do you make these kind of bats? I mean, the, so that's that's look, we're looking um, especially for the stuff the players are using. You're looking for a very particular combination of of, uh, of things within the timber yeah. that lets you do that. And then the, the the key one in that is timber that we call very low density. Low density. So, so the, the lower the density the better it compresses. So okay. the more of this will then hit will hit the ball. The higher the density, the harder the timber will be to start with, and that mm. takes longer to knock in, mm. and takes longer to become a good bat. Bet. The lower the density, the better it compresses, the bigger the sweet spot, and the more likely it's gonna end up in the player's hands yeah. uh, than anything else. 
Um, so that's the that's the key bit of the bat making, how you how the timber presses and how the bat maker does that. Once you've done that, then you're over onto the workbench uh, and you're into shaping. So if I just grab out a press. Kit. So this is the shaping area we are talking about. This is where, according to the player's preference, you measure the weight and all. Yeah, so this is so this is where all the fine tuning is. So this is a bat that's been through our press, so that's now got a nice curve okay. running from the on the face from top to bottom, mm -hmm. and that's the, that's the key thing. That's that's now pressed and ready for me to make. Oh. And then what I'll be doing here, um, if it's a player that's got a, um, a bat shape that he already likes, mm -hmm. we'll be able to replicate that over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, or we might be working on a new design for a player depending. On then some guys um, change a lot, mm. other guys don't. So Alistair Cook, the opening England mm. batsman, we haven't changed the, his setup since 2013. Okay. He's been happy since then with how it feels. In his so bat. what kind of a bat does he prefer? So Cookie's bats are they vary in weight between about two pound nine to two pound ten, sometimes a little bit more. Um, he has a uh, generally has a mid to low sweet spot yeah. um, and reasonable duck bill in the toe, not too much. Um, uh, fairly large shoulders, he doesn't want anything to break up too quickly. Uh, a standard oval handle, nothing particularly special there. The yeah. one thing you might spot occasionally with cookies will take his inside ears off from where he chokes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that will depend on how he's feeling. We don't make them with that, we like mm. make them with everything on it. Okay. And if he feels he wants it off, we'll take it off. Well, someone like uh, what should I say? Someone like David Warner, who yes. plays all three formats. Yeah. I am sure he's uh, he needs he, different kind of a bat. I mean, players that play like multi-format. We did for a while. We mm. saw players shifting uh, depending on what format they're playing. Yeah. Most guys now, if they're multi-format, use the same thing across all three. Yeah. If you get someone that's a 2020 specialist, yes. then you'll see a little bit of a change. 2020 specialist guys, um, or T10 specialist guys, uh. we're starting to see, um, they tend to carry a bit bigger, but a, a lot heavier about Have Heavier about Heavier. Uh, because basically, they've got less time to bat, yes. they, have to bat they have to work a bit harder, but if you've got a heavier bat, you get better value for your shots. Yeah. So the heavier the bat is, if you can time it, mm. you will hit it further than a lightweight bat. Okay. So, so uh, and uh, now there is a restriction from ICC yes. regarding these edges. Yes, edges. So we've got, we now have extra restrictions here on the edge, yeah. and then from the surface of the blade to the top of the spine. Oh, okay. So uh, we have to make everything within those boundaries. Okay. So, so we are we are seeing they are on the majority um, most people haven't noticed the difference. It's only yeah. a few players that were living outside those those boundaries anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's made it a bit more uniform for the players. But then even since they bought the regulation in you've still seen England set a world record for a one day game. Exactly. So it's not actually made a huge huge difference from that perspective. From yet. yeah. And if you can show our audience that how you shape this bat. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you how a few of the tools, uh, the tools would work. Yeah. So, um, the, the key one um, we'll, we'll show you here is I'll just show you how the drawing mm. knife works. This is, the, this is the, sort of the biggest thing in my armory, um, getting rid of wood nice and quickly. Mm. So, just taking large... Five minutes and each bed are being done with the handmade or any yeah, yeah, we do. We do. All, we all do handmade uh, uh, granite. So this is how we work. Whether it's our factory in the UK, our mm. factory in Australia, our factory in India, we all do the same thing. Okay. And uh, now, if you shape like this, the entire weight is towards the end. Towards the entire weight. Yeah. So the the, the weight. I'll know roughly where the weight's going. So I know what what my starting weight is. 
Um, so this whole setup as it is is currently three pound one ounce. Okay. So I know roughly where this is going to go to as a, a finished weight. Um, but that again depends on the shape. If you've got someone asking for a very big, very full shape mm. from this piece, it's going to be a bit heavier. Mm. Whereas if you ask for a slightly lighter weight shape, mm. you can do that as well. But it's you, yeah, that's part of the the art of being a bat maker. Uh, what generally is the requirement for any professional cricketer? Most most cricket players will be as big as you can get it within the restrictions mm. for as little weight as possible. Okay. So, um, you, you would most players because they're physically fitter and stronger than, it, than, than they have been for a long while. Yeah. Most guys will carry something that's not too dissimilar to this. Okay. So that's about the size and shape of most of our players' bats, and they'll want that to weigh around about two pound nine ounces. Two pound nine. If you can get it under two pounds ten, mm. they're generally happy. Mm. If you can get it the closer you get it to two eight, the better. Mm. You're going to end up on the majority at about two pound nine ounce. So this is the final product. Yes, so that's that's the final. That's as much shape, shaping work as I'll do with the tools. Yeah. And then from here, sanding uh, and polishing, and then yeah. labels and stuff. And these are these are the things. I mean, yeah, so these are some of the professional bats are there. Uh, so I would just grab some. Of this, uh, so, yeah. so that's all been finished up, polished up, ready to go. Okay. And how much is this? Is it? This one, uh, so we've got these all on a sale today, but normally these would be 250 pounds. Okay. Um, today they're 125. And these are ready to? Ready to go. Ready to go. And who are the uh, current international, some of the international stars we are associated uh, with Grey Nichols? So using Grey Nichols kit, uh, so in the England side you've got uh, Alistair Cook and Chris Wokes. Uh, in the Indian squad you've got Karen Nair. Karen uh, Nair. Uh, lovely lad he is. Um, uh, Pakistani side you've got Shadab Khan. Uh, in the Australian. Uh, Australian side, oh blimey. Um, Oh, I've got too many and I can't remember all their names. Uh, we've got about half a dozen in the Australian okay. squad. It's, it's quite, it's a very, very, um, oh, I was, all the names I was going to ring off are a bit old there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and people like Kane Williamson, the New Zealand batsman. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good, good coverage. Good coverage. Yeah. So, and they often do visit your uh, organi uh, factories? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the, our guys in English, whether it's international county players, or they'll come down a couple of times a year. Uh, the guys from other countries, so Karen's been down since he's been over with the Indian squad. Um, Kane Williamson, when he's over in the UK, he tends to have his bats made by the UK factory. When he's in New Zealand or Australia, yeah. made by the Australian factory. Uh, we just had Craig Braithwaite, the West Indian opener, mm. he was in last week. Um, so again, he's over here, so he'll have his stuff made by us whilst he's over here. So. And do you have any facilities in India? Uh, facilities in India, yes. So we have a factory in Jalandhar. Oh, Jalandhar, uh, yeah. yeah. And that's where our factory is over there. And so the guys can also go there uh, and deal with uh, we, we did have, oh, I can't remember the injured, the, the ladies uh, bats one, she bats at three for the Indian side. Of, okay. Uh, uh, she's, I can't remember her name now. Yeah. Scored a few big hundreds at the World Cup last year. Oh. Uh, she's another one of our players as well. So. Okay, so thank you Alex You're for explaining welcome. explaining us all this pro ex uh, procedure to our viewers. Thanks. You're very, you're very welcome.